Hey, this is Brent with Joiner Dye Knives. I'd like to talk a little bit about sheath making today. Um, we're gonna be making um, just a standard loop sheath uh, for a knife like this. It'll look about like that. Might not do quite as much stamping, but uh, we do knife classes here uh, at the shop and thought we might provide a resource for sheath making. So let's get started. All right, first things first, we're gonna make a template. First thing we need to do and what I like to do is fold the paper in half. Uh, we're gonna be using this uh, knife here. It's kind of got a nice drop point, but we've got a thicker guard we've got to deal with. So we're gonna make the sheath widen out some to accommodate that. So this one's got the same type of guard, so it should be able to go in and bottom out right where it needs to. So the first thing I'll do so I'll drop this on. I like to give myself about a quarter, between a quarter and half inch space between the folded edge and the, the sheath. This gives me room for that curve over. But I want it to be a little tight by the end of the thing. So we'll run it about right there. I trace the entire knife on. That enables me to get the sharp and pointy thing out of my face while I'm working. There we go. Now, because this one is straight enough, we're not going to have to run it at an angle, but what I can do is bring the sheath all the way around. And we can either give ourselves a little bit of an angle for detail, or we can go straight. So I think I'll just go straight with this one. Again, give myself about a half an inch, estimating that. There we go. If my guard is here, then I want to come to about where the guard is and then bring it out so that I've got that half inch going. There we go. Now I'll determine about where I want the thing to go across my knife. There we go. I like to give it a little curve. Again, aesthetics are important. And that'll look good. Okay, now I can get a ruler and position the loop. So I'm going to have a welt, which is the little piece of leather in here to protect my stitching. So I want my, my loop to be inside that, maybe about like that wide, as you can see. So I can run that there. We can tidy all this up when we go to cut. Now, one of the things that you're gonna have to see is that this will not be long enough for my loop. So I need to get this cut out and then I need to decide how much longer it needs to be. I could use longer paper, but I find if I can just extend it with the ruler on the leather, it works just fine too. Um, so we'll use our shears, cut this out. As you can see, I have two identical sides and I have two loops. I only want one. So what I'll do is I'll figure out which side I want to carry this on the on the night on the hip, and then I can cut off the one I don't need. I'd like this to be a right hand carry, so I'll be looping it down there. So I don't need this one. I also don't need this little tab here, so I can just run this across. Pull that off. Okay. So now I've got a template that should work pretty good for my knife, as you can see there. All right, cool. And then we can decide how long the strap needs to be. So my knife comes up to about here. So that's about where I want my fold to be. So I can go ahead and fold that over. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it. I need to be able to bring this down onto the sheath and sew it. So I need a good overlap. So what I'll decide is that from the edge of where I folded it, down onto the sheath is about three more inches. So I'm gonna just write plus three inch. Right there will help me remember. So let's get going on cutting my leather. 
All right, now I've got some leather. We're working with um, <laughs> about eight to nine ounces. Um, kind of depend on what you can get, but I like to work on, work with the, the raw leather and then uh, dye it later. So I wanna find a nice spot where I can add three more inches to my strap. This looks pretty good. You can use a pen or pencil. I find a sharp pencil works just fine. Transfer that onto your leather. If I use a pencil and I have any issues of overmarking, it's really not that big a deal. I can either erase it or burnish it out. But if I use a pen, that is in there forever. It's really easy to stain the leather, this raw leather when you're working with it. So it's important to have clean hands. Um, and sometimes I end up with a black sheath because I didn't wash my hands first. But you can always dye it black if you stain it too bad. I'm just adding that three inches that I want at the end of this. I'll probably leave that on the raw edge and I can finish it up when I'm ready to. So, move over a little bit. I've got my blue handled shears from Tandy. These make this work much easier. I find that using a utility knife takes longer and can be a little bit more dangerous, not necessarily. Though. Okay, now we have to get our welt made. The welt is the extra piece of leather that is in between the two layers. It protects your stitching and it widens out the sheath to receive the knife. There's two ways to do this. Uh, the one way, and the way that I usually prefer, is to trace the welt onto a piece of leather. Simple as that. We're going to Trace that. Okay. So what I need to do here, make some a pencil mark here. There's the, the tip of where we're working that. I want to come back just a bit and draw a straight line up. That's going to give me the relief from when I fold that over. And I think what I'd like to do here since we're working with the welt and not the main sheath, is we're gonna use a pin so it's a little easier to see. There we go. And so what I can do now is I can say, well, there's my point. So I can come back just a little, draw that nice line up there. Now I'm just going to use the sheath to give myself that half inch or three eighths Welt, looks oh, pretty good. All right, got a welt drawn. The other way that's possible is if you have a strap cutter, you can cut a strap. If I can get this one in there. Oops, not wide enough. And we'll cut our strap. And then you can glue that welt on by bending your leather. And a lot of times you have to do that wet. Now, if you have a sheath that's just round, let's say it's just a curve, it's much easier to glue your welt on by simply curving it. But I generally will go ahead and cut it the same exact shape 
it just it works out we always have scrap this is a little bit more thick on the scrap it's always good to have a few different size leathers around and then we'll cut this out we go a little longer we can trim later Now we have a welt that fits to our sheath. Before we move on, we're gonna have to clean this up a little bit. First, I wanna fold this over, determine the height, and then I need to go ahead and trim this up. So I think I'm just gonna give myself a nice curve. I'm gonna kinda eyeball that and make sure it looks really good. There are tools that you can get that will uh, cut these in certain uh, angles, but generally I will just go ahead and make a nice kind of round. This one I actually did at an angle, um, but they look good either way. Might have been because of the shape of the leather that I was working with, so we've got that trimmed. Now what I'd like to do is create a, a line for my stitching. But some of these areas are a little rough. There, I'd like to clean this up. There's a few ways that that can be done. By hand, you can use sandpaper. Um, but because this is a knife making shop, I have a grinder. So before I do anything else here, I'm gonna go over to the grinder and just clean this profile up. Make it really smooth. That way, when I put my line in, that will be really smooth. Um, we'll have to go back to the grinder at the end of the process, but this just ensures that I have a really good looking smooth line going forward. And I wanna put my lines in before I do any stamping because that will give me the edge that I need. So let's go over to the grinder. All right, we're back at the leather working station from the grinder. Everything's smoothed out. Uh, it leaves a little bit of fuzz there, but we know that our edges are smooth. So I'm just gonna take my uh, line tool, my, or edger, or whatever it is, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull the line all the way down like that. And then all the way down like that. So that gives me those lines. Now, I know this isn't really helpful to people that don't have a stitching machine, but I'm going to be stitching this with a stitching machine. If I weren't stitching it with a stitching machine, I would use a pricking iron. So this is uh, number four, or it has four tines. We can just use that. I'll do a few here to show you. Stabbing an awl like this through your leather um, is going to give you very uneven stitches. Um, there's certain situations where you have to, and there's certain masters that can do it really nicely. But most people, when they do it, it looks a little bit uneven and it snakes around. But if you use this prick and iron, it's going to make it go just right. So what I like to do is space it off the corner 
I'll use the pricking iron itself to about the fourth one there. Give myself a little indentation and then start it there. The reason I start it so far away is because I want to put a rivet in. So I'm going to leave some space there while I don't rivet through my stitching. And what we do is we just stab through. And you can see these holes. Now what we would do is we go all the way around this side and the other side, both sides, with the welt on. And that'll give us really consistent holes. Now another reason uh, that we use the pricking iron is that you see that the holes are diagonal. That's going to make the, the, the stitching go the same direction diagonally each time. If it's super straight, it'll also look like it's walking back and forth. So that's kind of why we do that. So I'm going to be doing this with my Tipman Boss, but that is how you would do that if you were to go around um, with hand stitching. So the next thing I want to do is a little bit of stamping. So I need to get this piece wet, so I'm just going to spray it with a mister. A regular spray bottle is fine. We just do this a lot, so we went ahead and got um, one of these misting spray bottles. It's pretty cool. Let it drop in for a second. Now I'm gonna be using some stamps. Um, I'm not really much of a leather carver, like freehand, but I've found that if we just get some of these leather stamps, um, it looks great. You can let this drop in for a long time, or you can just go ahead and let it rip, and it seems to do pretty good either way. So you can use any kind of whatever mallet. I have a really weird hammer that's in here, and that's what we're using. So I think I wanna use the sort of clamshell thing in the corners to start, so I'm just gonna Put that guy there, maybe one over here. We'll do something pretty simple. Now you can see why I really needed that line in because now I'm just gonna run this just on the other side of that line. And I'm just gonna have these touch each other. Like that. All right, so now is when I like to glue my welt on. Uh, this is still a little bit wet. Normally I would probably let this dry, but I'd like to get this done for y'all. Since it's wet and we're getting into where we're gonna be using some glue, I'm gonna use some cut right wax paper. We gotta both protect the sheath and my mat. We're gonna use some Weldwood contact cement. There are a lot of brands that leather work in places sell and they're fine, but we just find that regular contact cement works great. Uh, Leathercraft glue works good too, but we find that the contact cement, we can move right along to another thing pretty quick. Also supposedly works better with our stitching machine. Either one are great. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna put a thin layer on my welt. I like to do the, the suede side to suede side initially. I don't want any big standing globs, so I'm just gonna wipe that down. And then we know we're on this side, so we're just gonna run that. I don't like to get the contact cement all over the inside of the sheath. Um, sometimes you can see down into the sheath a little bit and that will act as a resist to our stain or dye later. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna have that all over the place. Taking your time, just getting it neat. Um, 
building on one accurate step after the other is the key. All of knife making, sheath making, construction, relationships. All right. You can let this dry for several minutes. It'll also work just fine pretty quick. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it on. If I have a turn, I usually start with the angle, lining it up as close as I can. I wanna err on the side. Well, I don't want any error, but you see, there we go, it's sticking out just a bit. Not too much though, pretty close. Um, that's gonna obviously be a little bit rough and we're gonna work that in later. I remember we talked about uh, the stitching holes. You would wanna have your welt glued on before stabbing your stitching holes through, of course. And now I have a little extra there, so I'm just gonna clip that off. Welt is on. Now, we need to let this dry a bit, but I'm gonna start with the uh, dyeing process next. Um, I'm gonna use Neat's foot oil, and then some oil-based dye, and then some acrylic uh, sealer for the top of it. So for now, we'll leave it, and we'll come back a little bit. All right, we've had some time to dry, and now we're gonna get to dye true because it rhymes. All right, so I've got some Neat's Foot Oil here. Um, and uh, Pure Neat's Foot Oil. That may be backwards. You can order it online or get it from a leather supply place. Um, now what I like to do is flood the leather with the Neat's Foot Oil first. That's gonna lay down a nice coat of oil that soaks in. Uh, most dyes are solvent based and they're going to uh, dry out and cause the leather to become brittle. So if we can add some oil back in before we even start, that's going to help the leather be more supple and last longer. I've seen tests done outdoors with all kinds of different uh, surface protectant and Neat's Foot Oil always comes out as one of the top contenders if not the best. Um, I think it's made from, or was traditionally made from like horse hooves, things like that. So you got, that's where your foot in Neat's foot comes from. That may or may not be true. It's something I heard. So as you can see, I'm doing my edges. Now what I'm gonna do here on the inside, uh, so I'm gonna drop this in. You may notice that the inside has a really fuzzy character, it's the flesh side. Um, that's going to stay pretty fuzzy until I add some kind of acrylic to kind of lock it down. There are ways to burnish it down, but I find that my tan coat acrylic coat is, uh, is a good way to do that too. I'm not going to put the Neat's Foot Oil on my welt because I'm going to be gluing that up. And the oil can kind of act as a resist there and not allow it to grab as well. And I'm also going to kind of... You know, eyeball that too on this side. And this oil already is going to darken it a lot. Now what's going to happen with this neat foot oil is it darkens a ton when you first put it on, but as it dries, it lightens up, but it still will be darker than the leather was. And I believe that just Neat's foot oil is a perfectly acceptable finish for leather um, because it's going to patina over time and be pretty awesome. Um, it won't be as like stain resistant or whatever, but um, it's kind of cool that it can develop its own look over time. But we're gonna do a darker uh, dye on this just so that you can see the process of going all the way through. You can use whatever color you want. There's all kinds of colors. Um, and again, if you mess up on your dyeing and you don't like it, you can always just go with USMC Black um, and that'll knock it out. So I'm gonna use uh, Feeblings uh, medium brown. There's a pro dye and a regular leather dye. The leather dye tends to be like, I don't know, like alcohol based. 
And the pro dye is smells very different, um, and I don't like it. Um, we actually, uh, I've got a little mason jar here because I actually will take this and I'll cut it with a little bit of alcohol. You can use denatured alcohol or like a cheap whiskey um, or whatever. Dauber, we've used this one before, but it's not too hard yet. So, all right, let's just drop it in. They say to always use a circular motion, but you can't always use a circular motion. Um, I've definitely found that the inside here is less likely to streak. It's tricky to not have your outside, your smoother side of your leather streak. Um, I don't have a foolproof method there. Some leather that you use tends to have it drop in better. Some doesn't. But I do find that using this oil-based dye, while the Neat's Foot oil is still fresh, um, it makes the dye drop in a little bit less quickly and therefore gives you less streaking. Um, it helps a little. It's not perfect. You'll still get some. Now I'm going to dye all the way down because I just want, even if somebody looks all the way down in that sheath, I want it to be consistent. But I'm not going to be quite as picky about how it finishes out. This first inch or two right in through here, I do feel like you can just see. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then I do like to little dye right there, little dye right there. Just in case in the future, when the sheath, if the sheath is in heavy use, um, and that start kind of starts to kind of pull away, we don't want raw leather there. We want the with the color. It's possible to sew the sheath first and then dye it after, but I find that I get the best results this way. Um, my edge, by the way, on this strap here is a little, a little on the wavy side. I'm going to go grind that really nice before we finish up and I'll probably hit the edge with dye again. So here we go on the, on the smooth side. Let's just drop that in and use plenty. Overlapping our edges, I'm gonna go to about right there. Okay, just let that drop in. Um, if you don't use enough dye and it's drying as you go um, and it's not standing up on the surface, that's another way that you're gonna be streaky. So we don't want one area to get a lot more and another area to get less. So hopefully we can keep this wet as we go. And that way there'll be so much on the surface that it'll all kind of soak in at the same time. Sorry about that. And I'm just gonna keep going with this, making sure it's all really wet. That should help me get a pretty consistent dye, really wet. Um, if you can get a lighter dye by putting less dye on, but again, just really flooding it is going to give you the most consistent color. And you see, it's actually darkening before our eyes. It was actually not so dark right at first, and then now it's darkening up. All right, so that's about all I need to do here for now. There will be more to do. Um, another tactic here. Is while I'm waiting for this to dry, I can go ahead and put some form in this that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over and kind of squeeze it like that. And then I'm gonna thin this over, squeeze it. Even though this is dye and oil and not water, it's still gonna help it retain its shape some. So we won't have to fight with it as much later. So I got that like that, that like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it, it'll really help it to maintain its shape. And we'll just maybe put this guy here. And then, uh, yeah, there we go. So that way we can come back when it's dry and we won't have to fight that. Um, every once in a while, right in through here, I've seen if you let it dry flat and you fold it, then you get a crack there if the uh, outside leather is too dried out. Um, that can be sanded away and, and um, dyed and finished because it's just the surface, but um, it's certainly not ideal. So we'll catch back up with you when it's dry. We'll add a finish to it, and then we'll sew it up. All right, I'm pretty dry here. Got a spring to it now. Um, so we're just gonna add some tan coat. This is a acrylic finish, and 
This stuff's a little sticky and snotty, but what we find is we just need to add, add enough to cover and then wipe off any excess. But I really like how this hardens up. Um, it's still, I think it still lets the leather breathe, but, but it helps it not scuff as easy. It's not as likely to soak in water, things like that. Okay, all done. A lot of times, refill this up, leave the dauber in, and it'll stay wet. You do about halfway. Now, this is gonna dry up and be too gloppy and sticky. It doesn't look good. Um, so what we're gonna do now, start with the side that we started with, is just wipe it. I'm gonna wipe all the excess off. And then whatever has soaked in or stuck is what we got. Now we can let this dry and do another coat um, or go with the one. I usually find the one's okay. Check out how that lays down though. Remember how fuzzy it was? Um, you might take a piece like this, real fuzzy, a lot of fuzz, and then it really lays down. So that's just one way without having to do a lot of extra stuff to using an acrylic coat like tan coat can do that. But you have to wipe this off while it's still wet um, or it will just get so goopy that it won't want to come off. If it gets too goopy, let's say you put it, say you're doing multiple sheets and you put it down. Um, we usually just spritz it with a little water um, and it will kind of break it up a little bit. All these bottles on the sides say very emphatically to not cut anything with solvent or water. The dyes will say, don't dilute. And all the finishes especially will say, don't do anything to it. But even the guys at the leather shop and everybody tends to have their ways of doing it. And most of these sheaths, people are gonna be doing something to dilute that. Pretty close to as even as possible. When it dries, it'll be even more so. That looks pretty nice. So again, we're gonna make sure that we got our shape that we want so we don't have to fight with it later. And then we'll let that dry and come back. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this one up um, because 
you're gonna need to see how to finish off the welt here and get everything all nice and burnished up and totally done. But that's uh, all the finishing so far. We're gonna probably have to let this dry overnight. We'll get back at it soon. All right, so we've given it overnight to dry. Um, before we start stitching, um, up in this area, I'm finding it still a little wiggly. I'm not crazy about that strap. And so we're gonna kind of burnish our edges. We can go to the grinder and do this, but I can also do it in here. Um, I could probably have done this earlier in the process, but because I'm uh, filming this, I kind of, you know, did it wrong. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off really nice and straight. And then I'm gonna have to maybe put my head in the way a little bit. There we go, that's better. Other side looks good. So we just cut a little bit off to straighten it up. Now what I'm gonna do is I can use uh, gum tragacanth, uh, gum trag people call it. Spit works really good. If you don't have it, you can just use spit. Just don't tell anybody, it grosses them out, but it's fine. But all we need is just some kind of a lubricant for our burnisher. The burnishing tool like this is awesome, but you can also just use a bit of uh, antler. Find the right size. Just run it back and forth, run it back and forth. That's gonna ease the edges, make them a little bit rounded over. It's gonna smooth down the grain of the leather. That's a really good way to get nice edges. I'm gonna go back over this with a little bit of a, um, let's do the other side. I'm probably gonna do the welt with my grinder because I'm gonna have to grind it off anyway. You can do it with, a blade, and we can talk about that when the time comes, but um, I'm going to use the tool that I have, and I'm talking about my process, so that's what my process is. And also, this is really a tutorial for knife makers, so you probably are going to have a 2x72 grinder if you're a knife maker, or something like that. We actually use the 1x30, the, ours is a Dremel brand, but a lot of people have the Harbor Freight ones. This is just going to give us a good looking spot here. And then we can kind of, you know, if we need to, get up into those corners with this guy. And it really helps it look good. All right, that's better. Close up my stuff. All right. Now, before I sew this... I'm gonna have to make some marks there. So I'll use my same little guy, run some marks. For this sewing machine, I'm not really putting a groove in as much as I'm just giving myself a registration, an area. There we go, and I can see that now. All right, so I'm gonna use contact cement to glue this together, but I've actually got to stitch this first. Um, people do different things. Um, gluing this down, riveting it. Um, I find that I've had very little, pretty much no bee backs with just sewing it. Seems fine. Um, generally, if I get um, a sheath returned, it's gonna be for uh, somebody stabbing the tip of the blade through the bottom. So let's uh, get you re... Uh, All right, over to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew that first before we glue the thing together. I'm going to go all the way around and then overlap my stitches by about three. Okay, so we're stitched. So the next thing I wanna do, cut these off almost flush, which is the teeniest bit sticking out. Run a lighter on that. 
press it down. Touching that's just about like touching a teeny little piece of candle wax. So it's no problem at all. I've overlapped by three stitches, so it should lock in real well. Now remember, if you're doing by hand, you're just going to use that same pricking iron. Here's a pricking iron with two as opposed to four. And you'll go all around. I usually start with just the one, and then I lay it down where I want it, and I transfer the marks. Um, oftentimes, what you can do is transfer the marks with an awl. So you can hold it and press through on each one with the awl, and then get that out of the way and stamp through just a single. It takes a little bit longer, but it's very clean. So that's ready now. Um, another thing we can do now is go ahead and get our sheath glued up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to glue it together so we don't have to fight with it while we're um, sewing it. But also, that's going to give us durability over time. I mean, one thing I've noticed, oh, getting a little messy. One thing I've noticed with uh, contact cement is once it's contact cemented together, um, it will stay together uh, indefinitely without stitching. Um, so the stitching is for a traditional look and also is a mechanical hold. It'll, it'll hold it together better. But um, this stuff really bonds the leather to itself. Um, one of the things that we can do here is kind of scratch up the leather bit. Give it a little bit of a better bond because that's the smooth side of the leather. Scratchy, scratchy, scratch. <laughs> Don't really want to get any contact cement on the outside of the sheath or anywhere that we're not trying to glue. But the nice thing about the contact cement, especially after you've dyed it and put finish on, is that if you just don't wipe it and let it dry, then it'll come off, it'll kind of roll off, like a, sometimes some of the glue that's used to stick labels onto stuff, where you can roll it right off. All right, I don't wanna get my fingers completely free of glue. There we go. Usually you have to let it set a few minutes but I'll just talk through this and then we can go ahead and press it together. I think we're fine by now. Let's do that. Oh. There we go. There we go. And we'll give that a second and we'll do some stitching and then grind it down. Cool. All right, we're gonna start backwards. We're gonna go back three, turn it around, and go all the way down and then go back three. So I've gotta kind of guesstimate where that's gonna be, but I've done this a couple times. We're gonna start about three quarters to an inch in from the very end. Always kind of hold these pieces so they don't pull through on the first couple. So that's three. Turn it around. So we're locking the stitch in. And now we can rock and roll. Done. 
So I gotta pull that in a bit. Side looks pretty good. So, same thing. Cool. All right, we've got our stitching. Now we need to put rivets in. We're going to rivet the bottom and the top. The rivet at the top helps. When the knife is coming in and out of the sheath, it not pull apart too much. And in the bottom, it helps the knife not penetrate. What I like to do is I like to take the female side of the rivets, I put it where I want on the sheath, get a good look. Okay, that looks good. Kind of right in the middle of the welt, far enough away from the edge to where I won't grind it off when I'm and press down. What that should give me is a nice little hole not a hole, but a mark where I want it. Then, it's usually wise to use a piece of scrap leather. And then this is like a cutting board material and a hole punch. It's been sharpened. going to boop. Female side is going to click onto the male. There it is. Now I'm going to direct your attention. Over here to the press. Stick it in there. Now, this is a, a set that is for setting the rivets. And you can buy it with the rivets. Um, it's domed on the, on the underside there. And that presses it right in. The Arbor Press is great, but you can also do this uh, with a hand set. So I'll do that next, just to show you. All right, here we go with this. We're gonna take our female piece, put it on where we think we'd like to see it. About there, press in, gives us a nice mark there. Don't care if it's lined up with the stamping or not because it needs to be in the correct place and it usually looks pretty good. So we're gonna put that right where it needs to be, stamp through. Not through yet. Not through yet. Kidding me? That's some good leather. All right, we made it. Got a nice hole all the way through. So, got this guy. There's my other piece. I usually like to stick the the male side in from the the back side because it's <laughs> more thin there, and you have a wider area on this place for the flange. Click it with your fingers, there you go. Then we'll use this little guy, stick it in one of the concave, and then this guy has a nice concave there. Bip, a couple taps. Works great. Maybe one more pop just to set it a little bit more tightly. Will it pull? Nope, we're okay. So I've got both of those done. Now, now that my rivets are in, I've got my welt to deal with. It's kind of crummy. There's a couple of things that you can do. Some people will, you know, take a utility blade and kind of carve along that edge. But we have grinders, so we're gonna do it on the grinder. So I'm gonna take you into the shop, show you how we do that. Once this is nice and smooth, we can dye that along with a couple of our other edges. 
and maybe put a little finish on that and do a final buff and we'll be finished. We're back from the grinder couldn't get it to focus that good but i usually start with something like a 60 grit belt to just knock down all the extra leather make sure there's no places where the welt is deeper or anything like that get it real smooth and then i went with like kind of a worn out 400 grit belt it's almost got kind of a glossy sheen right now which is great so we'll get a little dye now dye that Some people will use a paint on the edge. Um, there's like edge paints that you can buy. Um, I find the dye looks great. Um, the edge, it'll show a little ingrain, you know, um, it'll look a little different. But if you get it polished up, it'll be great. Um, and then remember this edge that we fooled with, so we'll do that now, no problem. Always okay to touch some stuff up near the end there, no problem. Just touch it up. I don't really want to get the dauber right on there. Hmm. Let's use a little tiny piece of paper towel. There we go. And use the corner, corner of the paper towel. Mm -hmm. There we go. Done. Alright, I'm sure if I rolled the edges, I usually kind of ease those edges on the grinder. Um, ease that up. And then, if we want, we can go ahead and gum track it again. See what we get if we add a little of this goo onto there and go ahead and start to work it. You know, let's try it. I'm using this round over to kind of help ease those edges over. The one are nice and kind of shiny where you see them for sure. It's looking a little better now. All right, that's mostly what we need. It's starting to shine there. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got a buff in the shop that's got a little wax. Just kind of hit over the whole thing with a wax buff. You don't really have to. You can just kind of give it a burnish with a paper towel. And 
and it will make a difference. You get a shine there, rock and roll. All right, let's we'll see if our uh, knife fits. Remember, we started with this template, and we ended up with this. So let's see if it fits. First thing I'm going to do is squeeze that out a little bit. Looking pretty good. You can kind of. There is some wet forming that you can do, but if you make these the right shape and size, they'll scooch on in, and then just with a little bit of use, they'll really press down good. Look at that. Another thing is, if you're not sure how far to push it, you know, you can possibly push this through, puncture the end. So what I like to do sometimes, lay it on top about where you expect it to be. Grab it where you want to grab it, right at the edge, and that way you can add put it in and then make sure it doesn't go any deeper than where you expected it to go. So that's the sheath. Um, this is a basic sheath. There's a lot I left off. There's a lot of techniques that people do. Um, some people I just really get crazy with it. Um, I'm a really basic leather worker, I'm kind of a knife maker first, um, but I wanted to show my technique here. Of course, the hand stitching takes some practice and I did not show that, but it's worth practicing to try to get right. And again, there's a lot of uh, resources out there uh, for that. But hopefully, whether you're taking a class here with Joiner Die Knives and Hardway Workshop, or you're just doing these things on your own, hopefully this helps you get an idea, an overall understanding for how to do this. Um, and yes, it does take a little time to get all the tools you need uh, to do this, but you should be able to um, get one of these made with kind of a basic leather workers kit. Um, that you can buy. So I hope you uh, like the video. Um, you can, uh, of course, subscribe and like the video and share it. Um, I really appreciate you watching.